Hello students, Eric Magidson here. I wanted to provide for you a little bit more detail in a short video in regards to the different types of standardized computing devices that we use today. So all of these are personal computers as they would call them in the in the general sense. And we're gonna take a look at some of them and look at the different components. So what I've done is I've gone out to Dell.com and basically gone through their inventory to find sort of a middle of the road basic home user configuration of laptops as you'll see here and then a sort of a power user of the same model so we have a basic general user laptop a power user same thing in a tower general power user general two in one so we'll talk about those power user two in one general all in one power user all in one I'm going to keep these last two just for fun. So when I did this, I had to have a little fun, and I'll share that with you in a moment. All right, so first of all, components. When we're talking about a laptop, we're talking about a computing device with a connected screen. A lot of times they're touch screens, built-in keyboard, built-in ports, sometimes not as frequently as, they, as it used to be, but built-in uh, optical media so that we can play DVDs, read and write CDs, DVDs, etc. So let's kind of look at the difference here. First of all, it is normal that in a desktop, because the components aren't as small as laptops, that we're going to get more functionality, more features, more power uh, for similar prices. As you can see, for $649 in a laptop, we're going to get a 7th generation i5 processor, seven, the 7200U. But notice in a desktop, we're going to actually get a little bit more processor, the 7400. Notice the speed. Uh, more cache, 3 megs of cache on this one, 6 megs of cache, which is going to help its performance. And speed at 3.5 gigahertz versus 3.1. Now, normally today, people will buy more laptops because we're looking for that portability, okay? But let's start just comparing the two similar models. So we have a seventh generation laptop here. It's an i5 processor. Here we're jumping up to an i7 quad core. You can see the cache is greater, the speed is greater. Now, I configured all of these with Windows 10 Home Edition with the understanding that a lot of you are gonna wanna look at getting that little upgrade to Windows 10 Pro. That's going to give us things like virtualization and Hyper-V, which we'll talk about in this class later, as well as other features and functionalities like the ability to connect a laptop to a business network where Active Directory would manage the laptop. Okay. Now at home, not as big a deal, but again, if you're going to get in virtualization, that's the big key where you're going to run other operating systems within the operating system. You're going to want uh, the pro model to do that. Okay, so let's also compare why are the prices different. Well, if you notice here, we're getting 8 gigs of DDR RAM. Here we're going to get 16 up to 32. Now this one is configured with 16. This is my laptop, by the way. I actually have higher versions of things in here than are listed but basically, this was my laptop when I bought it. It's now about $400 less than when I bought it. The new laptop I'm looking at has the latest processor and has 32 gigs of RAM, which is something I need for all the virtualization that I run. Let's look at the hard drive. So here we're getting a 1 terabyte 5400 RPM magnetic media secondary storage spinny disk, as I like to call them, whereas here we're getting solid state. So this machine is going to, the the hard drive is going to perform 50 to 100 times faster than the traditional magnetic media spinny disk. Notice here we're getting integrated video card. That means the video is integrated onto the motherboard. Here we're getting a dedicated video card, which means the video is processed off the motherboard, off the main processor, and independent. And you can see it even has four gigs of GDDR5 independent RAM. So not going to go through all the details. I want you to spend a few minutes. You can download this spreadsheet and look at it. Um, it'll be in the in this video 
link for you. Notice here, CD, no CD here. Here we get an upgraded uh, Bluetooth and AC for Wi-Fi, more battery, backlit keyboard's always fun, higher power because it needs more power to run the higher processors, the more RAM that it's doing. Everything that you see here is going to have the standard mail-in service. Now, I do want to talk about support and warranty for a minute. Please invest in support and warranty. If you're going to use the computer for four years in a production environment, it's worth the extra couple hundred dollars to get next business day service instead of having to mail it in and be without your laptop for a week or two weeks, you know, for a couple hundred bucks. Someone's going to come out to your house. They're going to fix it. Um, they're going to diagnose it faster, etc. So keep all of that in mind. Always good to invest. I always like to have a warranty for the entire years I expect to use the computer. So for me, being in IT, my computer usage now is about three years before I'm looking for a new computer. And if I could afford it, it would be every two years. That's how fast the technology is changing and adding so much more that would be functional to me. Most of you are gonna get four to six years out of a computing device. So let's just move on and look. As we talked about, we're going to get more with the desktop for a cheaper price. Notice here, more memory. Um, we're going to get a 7200 RPM, 6 gig per second, 64 megs of cache, okay, versus the one terabyte here. So you can go through this as we compare the two here. Again, look at the processor. Look at the amount of memory increase uh, that is available. Notice this XPS can go up to 64 gigs of memory. By the way, that's that's getting into the size 32, 64, 128 gigs, 256 gigs that we find in servers, okay? And we're not even talking about what the new processors and how many cores. Intel just released some brand new X core processors that have up to 18 cores of processing power available to them for personal computing, by the way, okay? So there's the desktops. Now, when we get into the two-in-ones, what we're looking at here, um, Microsoft has ones that actually the keyboard disconnects from the screen, thus creating a true independent tablet. Here, we're turning it over, and we're using the tablet um, independently of the keyboard. We can use this as a laptop. We can use this with a stylus and just use. We can read with it. However, because the two don't disconnect, it can be somewhat cumbersome. But you'll notice the difference, and I encourage you to take some time to look at the difference in what we're getting in prices. Here's an i5, here's a 7, you know, 8 gigs of RAM, 8 gigs of RAM. Um, here we're getting, though, the solid-state drive. That's going to be the cost differentiator here, a lot of it, compared to a 5,400 terabyte. We're giving up space, but we're getting a lot of speed. So here we would look at storing more of our data on the cloud, or in cards such as the um, micro SD or SD cards where there's an SD card slot that we can add you know up to 256 gigs of additional space that's high in, and high speed for us to store so uh, Bluetooth and wireless we definitely want to have that notice again that on DV, uh, CD DVD or optical media not available in these so the compact size limits what we can get in features and functionality, backlit keyboards, power, etc. Now, as we move over to the Inspiron all-in-ones, the reason these are called an all-in-one, and as we might have discussed in class, there is no tower. So the monitor, the motherboard, the processor, the memory is all behind this video or screen that we see here. These can be touch screen in a lot of cases. So just comparing the two, you know, both are i7. But notice here, 7700T, 3.6 gig. What's going to be the difference? The memory is going to be the difference. Here we have, you know, two terabytes of 5400 RPM plus a 32 gig SSD cache. So in this 32 gig, we would install the operating system and some programs that we run a lot. We're going to see great performance here. Notice dedicated video cards over here, integrated graphics on the motherboard. Why? Because we don't have the space for the video card. Here we get a tray. Most likely there was a DVD RW in here, if not a Blu-ray. 
Uh, it just didn't come up in the specs. We start getting into sound cards where a lot of these are going to be integrated sound on the motherboard. Now we're getting into dedicated sound cards in the desktops because we have the room for them, in the all-in-ones again because we have the room. We tend to get, you know, here's wired keyboards. Here we're going to get wireless keyboard. We're going to get a better quality. You can see this is like an ultra thin, nice keyboard sort of simulating maybe the Mac keyboards. All right. All right. So let's end this with having a little fun. Let me move over here. We'll look at the Alienwares. Let me move back. There we go. Hate to show all that. Oh, come on. We'll leave it like that. All right. I'll let my, um, anyway. Alienware. So these are fun. These are not for the normal user. These are for folks that plan on gaming on their computer. You can see why the cost becomes prohibitive. These, by the way, are not just for gaming, but also for things like, you know, video processing, processing video, recording your own music, doing a lot of stuff where we need the processing power. Notice here we get up to an i7 quad core 8 meg cache overclocked which means they've taken the manufacturer's uh, recommended clock speed and actually make the processor work faster than it's normally intended to work, okay? Now, the cool thing about this is the Dell engineers have done this so that they know that these can be safely overclocked, that you're still going to get the performance, and you're not going to be wearing your processor, thus having it uh, wear out faster, heat up past the acceptable heat rates, etc., Notice here, 64 gigs of memory, uh, 16 gigs versus 64 in the desktop. Notice, by the way, this does not include a monitor, okay? So this is before you go out and buy those really nice dual or quad screens that you would want to present the data. So just a little fun uh, to look at these. Notice here, 8 gig video card for gaming here we can get multiple video cards dual nvidia geforce titans with 12 gigs of independent ram they're going to have their own processor we have two so we can run multiple monitors each with a dedicated video card that's why these get expensive but you know pretty fun to look at what folks will invest in gaming laptops and and uh, invest in their hobby all right that's enough i hope this helps y'all take care